uh, the way that we respond to a code is completely different from what he did. You know, we, he had an AMBO bag. We try and resuscitate people with AMBO bag, well, get oxygen. Let's describe what that is. I mean, the, like, it's, it's one thing he said he could, he'd never done mouth to mouth before, which I already thought was bizarre. I've, yeah. I've done that many times. But in a hospital, they have these bags called an AMBO I, bag. You, no one has ever given mouth to mouth in a hospital. I've never seen I, it. I have. But before the I, I days, know, but I'm a, old enough to have done that. Before yeah, the HIV was, days, we used to do time. that. Yeah. Was, uh, th thank you, Ellen, by the way. It's a long, long time ago. But yeah, but now we have AMBO bags, we have respiratory therapists oh, yeah. and stuff Everyone there. learned. I've it, never seen someone give mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. We right. always use these AMBO bags, and yeah. what they are is they're a little sealed bag yeah. with a big uh, and air chamber. And he had chamber. an AMBO bag sitting he at the bedside. He had one, but he didn't, know, it didn't look like he knew how to use it. Wow. And he didn't explain in his own investigation, he didn't explain the proper way, uh, you know, to, to run a code. You know, and we, we give sedation all the time as cardiologists, not propofol, but we give sedation, and we know how to act when someone stops breathing. You know, we tilt their airway, we have the AMBO bag, we're, we're ready to use them. it, yeah. we give reversal agents yeah. if we have to, and if someone is in trouble, we either call for help or we intubate the patient, and he wasn't prepared for that at all, and he was giving a very uh, dangerous drug, a very strong anesthetic, and he should have been absolutely <laughs> prepared <laughs> for that. <laughs> and, and then the other thing I want to say, that he was giving, when someone has a respiratory arrest and stops yeah. breathing, we don't give chest compression. You first breathe. The heart is working. You first breathe. The heart is circulating. Yeah. So he wasted his time. Instead of not calling 911, he just started giving chest compressions. Which does it was nothing. Just, it, and and it, it I would say ridiculous. also, too, to point out people, that the combination of the benzodiazepines, the Ativan, the midazolam, plus the propofol, extremely dangerous combination. Jane, uh, did you want to ring in here on this conversation? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think You're this is a wake-up call for all the doctor feel-goods out there. And as a recovering alcoholic with 16 years of sobriety, I have a lot of sober friends who have talked about their past as doctor shoppers and how they work the system and they go from one doctor to another and they pick them in different parts of whatever city or county they're living in and they know how to you get get it insured. They know to change the doses and um, they're working the system. I mean, this is a big problem and I hope this is a wake up call for the country that we've got to look at this issue. And Jane, I want to hit something headlong that you and I addressed kind of gently on Nancy Grace's show a few minutes ago, was that people immediately get angry or defensive that, oh my goodness, if I have legitimate pain needs, I'm not going to get my pain medication. Of course we're not saying that. Of course we are. But even those people that seem to have legitimate pain need, if there's any question of addiction that needs to be addressed aggressively with a team, and Jane, you as well as I know that that happens all the time as well. I think this is yes, and also people go in. Uh, go ahead, finish, Jane. People go in they, often they say, for legitimate reasons, and then they develop an addiction and go back for illegitimate reasons. So it's not like they're always well, starting and, and not out even knowing. And Jane, not even you're right, and not even knowing that's what they're doing. A lot. I got about 15 seconds. What uh, do you got? That's exactly what. And I think this is great education for doctors that we need to practice within our boundaries and now we're not you know when someone comes to me with an obvious addiction problem I'm more educated now just from this trial that I have I can tell the patients listen this is outside my my uh, uh, expertise I need to send you to an, a specialist right because people ask me all the time as a cardiologist oh can you just fill up my Percocet can you fill up my Ativan and, and now I have ammunition I will now you have ammunition what you're feeling from triggering is righteous indignation from the patient which is nonsense huh. you should right how dare you say I'm a, no, nonsense. You saw what happened to Michael. That's right. your ammunition now. 